problem set, we're asked to compare the effects of three different diuretics on the body. So first, we're going to be looking at ethanol. And we're going to compare this with caffeine. And then the last diuretic that we'll be looking at is excess blood glucose. So let's discuss ethanol first. You may recall from the lectures that we did in class that ethanol is going to be a diuretic because it inhibits ADH release. And ADH is antidiuretic hormone, which typically acts to save water in the body. So if you don't have this hormone or it's deficient, then you will have excess loss of water. Now ADH is very potent, so we're going to see that this has a potent diuretic effect. And also, because we're losing all of this water, we're going to see that this always results in a hypoosmotic urine solution. So we're going to have a very dilute urine whenever someone has been drinking ethanol. And there's going to be a lot of water in the urine that's produced. So let's then compare that with caffeine. So with caffeine, it works by increasing the GFR. And it mainly does that by dilating the afferent arterial. So we found that that's a pretty mild effect because there are certainly mechanisms in place to compensate for small increases in GFR. But in this case, if someone does drink caffeine, you will see that increase in GFR. So we're increasing our filtration, but when we filter, it's a relatively isoosmotic solution. Now, it's tough to say for a given situation whether the urine itself would still be isoosmotic urine because there are certainly things that could be happening later on in the nephron past the glomerulus, but we'll assume in this situation that it's still relatively isoosmotic because we do filter typically an isoosmotic solution. All right. Now, the last situation is someone that has excess blood glucose. And we can assume that this is probably someone that has diabetes mellitus. So that's a very common condition where you see that there's excess blood glucose. And this is classified as an osmotic diuretic. So what we have in this situation is there's excess glucose that's in the bloodstream that gets filtered and the water is osmotically attracted to the glucose within the nephron. We exceed our ability to reabsorb that glucose that's filtered. So this would result in the production of an isoosmotic urine because the water is attracted osmotically to that glucose that's still present in the urine. And this can range when someone is early on in diabetes. It might be a mild effect of the blood glucose, but certainly in untreated diabetes mellitus, this could be a rather potent effect. Okay. So we have three different diuretics, each of which is operating by different mechanisms, and we need to go back to our answer choices and see which one of them would fit with the three different diuretics. Okay, so for response A, go to response A. It says two cause their effects by the same mechanism of action. We actually saw that all three of these different diuretics fit into our different classifications. One inhibits ADH, one increases GFR, and one is an osmotic diuretic. So we can eliminate A. Okay. All results in the production of a hypoosmotic urine. Well, if we go to our results, we see that ethanol is the only one that results in a hypoosmotic urine. 
so we can also eliminate B. Right? All result in production of an isoosmotic urine. What we saw that was the case for caffeine and excess blood glucose, but that is not the case for ethanol. So we can also eliminate C. All right, response D, at least one will always result in the production of a hypoosmotic urine. And we saw that that is true of ethanol because we're inhibiting ADH, you'll always have a hypoosmotic urine. So that is a correct response. Let's go ahead and look at E though. At least one will always result in the production of a hyperosmotic urine. And that wasn't the case of any of our diuretics. So we can eliminate E. So our correct choice here was D. This should certainly help you to solve some of the later problems that are given to you in the problem set comparing different diuretics. So please let me know if you have any questions about this material.